All right, today for you guys, I've got a great interview with a fellow named Mark Jones. He is a fantastic endurance athlete. I've known him for several years. Um, we used to work together and I, we used to train together a little bit. We actually did a competition together in Alabama a few years ago. He does things most of us can only dream about, running 100 mile races, 150 mile races, doing things like winning the Spartan Death Race series. Winning, not being in, winning the Spartan Death Race series. This dude is crazy. Check him out. This is a great interview. Hope you enjoy it. My name is Mark Jones. I'm 36 years old. I live in Milton, Vermont. Cool. Um, and uh, what is your what's your claim to fame, Mark? My claim to fame is meeting you. <laughs> that's, that's a good answer. <laughs> I mean, that's why I'm here today, right? <laughs> we met one in our lives, and now we're kind of uh, circling back. To yeah, I, I tell yeah. people I tell people about you like all the time. I was like, oh yeah, I, I used to work with this guy, and I used to, to train with him, and he was just this crazy uh, like ultra endurance guy running like hundred mile races, and it's like you're like you're just like I tell I talked about you like you're like a legend. Like from the past, it's like, oh, uh, this this man that I once knew. Yeah, um, I guess so. After I left you in um, in South Carolina, I, I guess, I guess yeah, this is my claim to fame, the peak of my life, maybe. Uh, and I'm climbing another peak, but right right now, this is what I would say. I left uh, South Carolina and. Go to Cena, the CEO of Spartan Race, happened to uh, coincidentally just email me at a really low point in my life. Uh, you know, I was, I was going through a few things with a divorce and, and just kind of living out of my car and not, not having a path to, to really follow. Uh, so Joe's like, hey, I, I know you're a good athlete. I have this death race challenge coming up, and you come move to Vermont, I'll house and feed you. And I, I was, of course, I gave it some time because I didn't want him to think I was desperate. But <laughs> <laughs> pretty desperate when you're living out of your car and you have no to go. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I moved to Pittsfield, Vermont, and uh, lived out of a cabin. Uh, off and on, uh, that was my house, a cabin with no heat, no water, uh, but he did live up to the, I'll, I'll feed you and I'll house you, and, and I got to train there in a rugged lifestyle for, for two years, and the, uh, the ultimate goal out of that endeavor was to, uh, win the Death Race series that was going on at the time, Yeah. which was basically like playing a long game of golf. Uh, in in that you had to have the lowest score in each event, meaning you had to uh, be the best at every event. So you mm -hmm. came in for get a point, uh, and there was five five events, and you had to complete three of them. So it's like world's strongest man, but with like endurance stuff. Right. Yeah. So it was, it was five death races to choose from, and you had to do three of them. So I chose summer. Uh, winter and Mexico, and long story short, uh, within those two years, I won the Death Race series, and uh, that's banging. Kind of, you know, did a bunch of other things in, in that time as well. But you know, moving there and having the opportunity from Joe, thank you, uh, really changed my life and, and got me on the right path. You know, you seriously just described the the like training nerd in me that dream like it's uh it's Mastatsu Oyama it's it's uh Musashi disappearing into the wilderness for for years at a time and then coming out and being like you know ridiculous you know it's like you're just oh. you, you're a legend because you like you dis I, I went and trained in the mountains for two years and, and now I'm now I'm a god <laughs> I'm, I'm nowhere near that but <laughs> But it's sort of like it's sort of like a trope. I would go in the mountains for a few hours and come down to a to a meal cooked for me, and then go to my uh, cold cabin with no heat and no stove. But you know, it, 
I had a fluctuated kind of roller coaster ride during that journey, and yeah, it, it helped. But you know, that's that's sort of the the like I said, that's sort of the trope though in a lot of different, especially like um, Eastern media. Um, like that whole like martial artist goes up into the into the mountains and trains for an extended period of time and then comes back down with tattered clothes and they've been living with no running water and, and no heat and you know fighting bears. Um, I don't know if you fought any bears while you were up there, but I'm gonna I'm gonna imagine that you did. Well, <laughs> the only bear I saw, believe it or not, was uh, there's this dog. I'd run by this guy's house and his dog would always follow me, and we'd run together and I run by the house and say goodbye to the dog but this thing was really small but it could run forever it was it's like the best endurance uh animal in the world i swear but the one day i'm running up this mountain and it starts yapping away and i'm like the heck something's up and it's chasing this baby bear up the tree oh wow you know you know the rest of the story is like yeah there's the baby where's the mama uh, but we never saw the mom, but it was kind of cool to see a little dog chase a, chase a little baby bear up the tree. That's a vicious little dude. I was ready to fight the big bear, though, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were prepped. Oh, I was prepped. Can, so can you describe to me the, the, set, the training sessions, the kinds of stuff that you went through um, during that two years? Yeah, uh... So, so the first couple of weeks, I was always carrying like a 50-pound pack of like survival stuff with an axe, and people thought that was crazy everywhere I went. Uh, but in a town of 450 people, they kind of got it with the uh, race series that I was going through there. And mm -hmm. Did what I was doing, but they still think that was goofy. Um, however, uh, Outside Magazine actually came one day, and they were interviewing somebody else uh, in Joe Decina. So the general store was like, just think of it as like the center of this little town. Sure. Where you ate. So I walked in there as soon as it opened. Uh, it was like 5.30, 6 in the station. And, and Outside Magazine was doing an interview. Uh, and they, they said, come over here. And Joe was sitting there. And he's like, you got to meet this guy. And they were talking about why I was there and this and that. And then they said, you look kind of tired. Are you going to sleep soon? And I said, no, I got to work all day. I've been up all night. And I said, what, what time? I was like, well, I went out. I was working all day yesterday. And then I went out at like 8, 8 at night. So I wanted to get some night hiking in. And at yeah, this time, there's, you know, it's like snowshoe, uh, snowshoe weather. You're yeah. bundled up really cold. Uh, so I was out all night till the next morning, and they were just shocked. You know, as soon as I slammed my pack down on the ground, they were just like, "Who is this guy?" But you know, just those long, mind-numbing, no music, uh, just that wind in your ears, uh, kind of, you know, that that. Wow, I I really want to go home and get under the covers. I really want to be warm right now. I want that hot shower. You know, when you start thinking about those thoughts, that's the kind of training you're really starting to get into that will enhance the performance mentally. Uh, of course, there's that physical part, but when you start thinking about food and warmth and comforts and you're going beyond that and eliminating the mess of the future and overcoming those thoughts, that's when I believe training really starts. Because I imagine a large portion of that is, is mental. It's just, you know, your body can do a lot, but then eventually your mind's like, nah, I'm, I'm tapping out. Well, think about all the millions of people every day. And I, I know you've done this as a personal trainer, and same same with me. Uh, that are just like, I have no time in my day to do anything. We know that's a myth on our, on our journeys, individual, our individual journeys. We know that's a myth. There's always time. But that's the first mental barrier. First, you have to get outside. You have to go do what you set out to do in the beginning of the day. Don't even think about what you're going to set out for. And there's no way you can spring it and you can uproot it at the end of a long work day. Mm -hmm. okay, right, now this is what I'm going to do. So, uh, yeah, if you can't do it when you're fresh, how do you expect to do it at the end of a day when you're already taxed? Well said. Perfectly. Yep. Exactly. Makes a good point. All right. 
That's that's cool stuff. Like, uh, I've I've sort of caught this in, endurance bug myself a little bit. Um, so like I I always have had this issue of being of trying to do all the things. I want to do like I I love everything, so I want to do everything. And unfortunately, that that kind of like hamstrings your ability to get good at anything. Right. And so I had to say, well, okay, well, what are the things that I want to be good at? And one of the things when I broke it down was, I don't want to get tired. So like, I don't, I don't ever want to be like, go, oh, I'm tired. And like, so what's the way that I can do that? And it's just try to make that, and that ability to endure part of, or at least get comfortable with being tired. <laughs> right. Right. Yep. Uh, yeah, it's. They always say you have to be uncomfortable being uncomfortable, and it's 100% true. But there's also, you can't, a lot of that goes with, oh, yeah, I'm just a hard head, and I'll, I'll figure it out once I get in that environment, in that scenario. But, you know, I've, I've quit endurance events where I thought, I had that mentality. I was like, oh, I've done this before, I can do it. And, you know, I'm just watching this, uh, the Netflix, the Netflix video uh, last night on uh, uh, what's his name, Ronnie Coleman, yeah, the, uh, I'm you know Olympian, and uh, it 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 seems like everybody said by that eighth time he thought he had it in the bag because he you know, it was a shoe in It was seven times on that. We gave him that eight time, whether he worked hard for it or not. Yeah. Being on stage, he would get it. I think that mentality comes in too. You know, once once we all get into this endurance mindset, we're like, oh, I've done 100 miles. I, I could go do four marathons because that's not 100 miles and we can back it up week after week after week. And I think all athletes go through that phase and they just want to race, race, race. But, like you said, if you want to get good at it, you always have to prepare it, regardless if you've done it before in the past or not. Uh, and, and, again, you know, that's the level you want to be at. If you just want to finish, that's a whole different level. But I like to, I like to, you know, lay in a race and feel good the next day, yeah. have good mobilization, good nutrition, and then get right back on track. And for the most part, you know, knock on wood, I've had no injuries. The only issue is, is I'm getting older, and you have to be smarter. So things have yep. to switch around, and, and uh, you have to you have to explore new training cycles. And because you don't race as much, and you're not big on social media, and really want to put out yourself, you lose sponsors. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that's the whole game too. Did itself. you do, do you not have a social media manager? Somebody that like does that for you? Uh. I have a girlfriend who is is really helping me with this. Good, and, good. Uh, she's really pushing it more than I ever have. Um, I've just I'm not big on doing that, but you know, with with the huge uprise of social media, that's what they want. If you don't do it, then oh, absolutely. And what didn't what didn't make any sense to me was you were so you're so good at this stuff, and like I've I've seen you do crazy stuff, and it's like you should be rolling in, the, you know, sponsors, and it's just maybe just because you don't like to talk about yourself. And so I was like, I, if if there's anything that I can do to let people know how freaking cool you are, then yeah, that I would like to do that. Because like seriously, you do. Kn- I I know that I talk about you at least uh, once every couple of weeks. Wow, thanks, man. I always remember that that journey we took to what was it, three 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 three? Yeah, Al- Alabama. Yeah, that was, that was a good that was a, that was a good trip. There's some weird stuff that yeah. happened on that trip. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, man. Uh, I, I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, hard. Um, so, what are some tips that you would give um, people that are looking to get into, like, that have never done any kind of endurance work, that, that look at a marathon, look at an ultra marathon and go, oh, okay, that sounds like something I might want to do. What are some tips you would give to an absolute newbie? Absolute newbie, 
brain or uh, set that event one year out, and then have a couple events that will cater to that event throughout the year. So, for example, if you're doing a hundred mile race, uh, twelve months from now, uh, explore a fifty k or a hundred k. Utilize those two events. Uh, obviously, spread out in, in a pretty good distance from each other. <laughs> sure. Uh, call, it, call it four, four, and then you know, hundred. Uh, just explore those events before before doing it. But push that hundred mile uh, twelve months out, and um, you'll plenty of time. That's the biggest thing that everybody like cool events, like you said, are all over the place, and there's so much out there, and we. You know, our lives are really short to try to even accomplish a percentage of all of it. Yeah. And and you just get in this mentality, but I, I just see it all the time. People are doing events every weekend, and they're they're just getting hurt. Bodies oh. are breaking down. Friends are disappearing, and and you know, <laughs> just not racing anymore. And uh, you just you have to slow it down and be smart. Uh, I I finally. In the last couple of years, I've gone to a coach, I've gone to several coaches to to help out uh, for motivation and um, smart training, and I've learned a lot, I've learned a lot more, and I think I'm, I just continue to get stronger, um, and that that's going to cater to next year's events I'm really focused on. And this is the other issue is that a lot of guys like to do a lot of small events, which I think. And kind of cater to the big events, but I like to focus on two or three big events a year and really uh, get my mind 100% on those and not worry about small races because sure. that's not the, that's not the main event. Uh, but that makes sense. Like I you, hope, well, I think I was kind of scrambling there. No, 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 no. I think that that strategy makes sense because that allows you to be able to. Really focus your training on whatever that that big event is, instead of being so scattered with your with whatever your your periodization is. So you don't have to have like, oh, I've got an event coming up, so I've got to taper a little bit, and then I've got to have this recovery time afterwards. Therefore, I can pick my training back up again. You can just have your whole macro cycle uh, fit based on those big events. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. And it, and plus for me, I always say. You know, I always I always reference Rocky. I'm like, what's the best part of the movie? And everybody everybody would say, I don't know. Let's let's ask you, what do you think the best part of the, of the movie Rocky is? The first Rocky? Mostly all of them, but yeah, let's just say the first one. Oh God, you're literally asking me the best part of my favorite movie. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, okay, I, I I you know the first place my brain went to just because it's the first place is is the the, the montage. That's, okay. the, that's the first place my brain went to was the montage. But I'm also a training junkie, so. <laughs> that's that's what I would say. I would say the training is the best part, and that's for me. That's life too. Like I go to the races to see how how how, um, how, how great my training has uh, culminated to the final event. Uh, I already know if I have smart training and I'm committed to that event. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be, go do it. If I'm not, if I'm not focused or happy with my training, I will not do it. Like, for example, I was gonna do the bar night when we get this year, and I haven't been, I haven't been happy with certain parts of the training, and I don't feel 100 percent that I can go and do well. Uh, I can get it done. Mm -hmm. it's only done. I'll finish and I'll have over 50 miles, probably even 60 miles on that course, but I don't want to do it because I'm not going to finish where I want to finish. Therefore, I'm going to save those that month, actually really like two months, and I'm really going to dedicate that to training, and I've just bumped a new timeline for next year with a completely different event. Uh, so, therefore, I'm going to have more happy time, training time. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, that's great. What is your, what's the next event you're looking at? Uh is kind of on low key. Okay, well, uh, if you don't want to talk about it, that's fine. That's okay. Uh, it's. 
I have I have Go Ruck assessment, which will be the first year they're doing it. Uh huh. And Go Ruck selection. Wow. So that will be two forty-eight hour events uh, next year. Uh, and so, yeah, those those are the those are the two main. That goals. sounds insane. Uh, to do both of those in one year would be pretty up. Yeah, 40, 48 hour. It's never been done. It's never been done. So, to accomplish both of those next year would would be historic. That's awesome, and and that I think that's important is to always be trying to look for something. What's something that is nobody else has done before? How can I be that guy? Yeah. So, so for me to complement that kind of training, uh, I'm on the National Guard Marathon team. Yeah. So, doesn't sound like a big deal. I'm not going to be any Ethiopians, and I don't need to be that kind of that kind of size to go into the, these events that I'm going to do. Sure. So, what I'm using the marathon team for is to get me entries and travel into races. Uh, and I just I just did the Marine Corps marathon with a 35 or a 45 pound pack. Woo! That complements, you know, obviously the training coming up so uh, which to me I think it's easier to carry the weight <laughs> distance than to train specifically to try to run a 249 which is what I would do normally if, uh, if I wasn't carrying the weight yeah so. wow and in to further that I'm trying to <laughs> In this process, I'm looking at Guinness World Records, and I want to start knocking those off throughout this journey as well this year. I'm starting you know, with low weight, low mileage, uh, and then gradually building off, uh, you know, and, and hopefully knocking off some of those records. There's a lot of red tape that goes into getting Guinness to recognize you. Um, one of my students broke the world record for... Um, for distance, uh, walked on his hands in eight hours. Um, yeah, is a it's it was over five k, in uh, on his hands. Um, yeah, um, he's he's uh he's he's an incredible guy. He, you can actually watch his uh, if you go to our uh, the anime trainer uh, YouTube channel. You can actually watch the interview we did with him, um, where he talks about all the stuff, and he's he's really phenomenal. I, I'm sure you'd love listening to him because he's got because he's an he's an endurance athlete too, but just on his hands. That's a different level of crazy. Like, that's insane. Yeah, he does some crazy. He actually wants to do the Boston Marathon on his hands over the course of eleven days. I mean, he drops down, right? He's not just upside down the whole time. Oh yeah, no, no, he. He can go down, but he has when he gets back up, he has to put his hands in the same place that he was. Okay. Yeah. That must, wow. Good for him. That's incredible. Oh yeah, it's it's really crazy. crazy. But you know what, dude? You were ta- the way you were talking about it, like you know, just looking at something and going, "I want to go after that." I think that single mindedness is what makes you great. I I just look at so I reached out to a company. Uh, for their support, so I really would. I really, if anybody's listening, I really would like a sponsor for this. I know I can break some records. You can be a part of it. Um, but you know, when you get older and you think about certain things, and you want to have something to leave behind, something to have to do and not be by. And uh, I think at the same time, why do this for myself, right? So I reached out to the company and said, "Look, this is what I want to do." Let's let's do it for charity. Uh, for me, you know, being a veteran, I wanna I wanna do it for veterans. Uh, for mostly as a turning point I had in my life, the 180 switch from negative to positive in a in a uh, self therapeutic way, uh, not taking drug pres- prescription drugs and, and having that self remedy uh, for fitness. So if I could spread that message and show that. I've done all these things. I've been down your road of alcoholism and, and uh, divorce and all these all these other negative things that bring people down and bring people to suicidal thoughts uh, through fitness and show them that you can be great, you can set records, you can do amazing things in life. 
that's what I want to do. And it sucks because, I, you know, that red tape is hard to break. And I have some friends that have done some records and I can get to them, uh, to Guinness. But, but for me, some of that administrative stuff is kind of difficult throughout a full work day and training and all that. So any kind of help uh, with that would be amazing. I'll be the athlete. I'm, I want to really go speak to veterans. I want to help them out any way I can. Uh, yeah, so that, that's kind of the, the internal path to, to the big goals uh, coming up next year as well. That's fantastic. And and like I like I said, you're um, I think in hunting down those like really specific goals like that, that's what's gonna end up making the difference. Because I I I've sort of like come to that conclusion myself. It's like you know I enjoy doing all these things because they're fun and I like doing lots of different stuff. But it's really when you start focusing in on an, on an activity or exercise or whatever it is and really get great at it. And, and you become like the best at it, where you you find that pinnacle of, of greatness. Like I, they, you you come to this new level as a human being. Right, right. Think about all the years that you've trained. You've gone outside, and it's that you've crossed eyes, or someone's driven by you, just training, running, carrying some weight, flipping a rock, whatever, jumping in water, and just it just it's mind numbing. To realize, like, I think it's for me. And I started in like 2006, and then I had all the marine time and stuff. But really, like, 2006 started on the endurance journey. So 12 years ago, uh, and all the people that you pass on a daily basis throughout your training that you've inspired, so think of all the people that have seen you, and they're like, "Today's my day." Yeah. Uh, I just I think about, and that's why I love the training so much because. In my heart, I feel like I'm inspiring somebody every day. Um, but I want, I want numbers, and I want to, I want to know um, for a fact. I want to know who these people are, and I want to meet them and, and see their journey and, and help them with their journey. You know what? The fact that you, you go to bed. The fact that you like that is amazing. And let me let me break this out. I've been a I've been a fitness blogger for over ten years. Um, uh, been YouTube really doing re- YouTube really hard for about a year and a half right now. So in that time, I've touched a lot of people and I've inspired a lot of people to do stuff. I had somebody come up to me at, at an anime convention and be like, "Hey, you know, thanks to you and one of my other students who has a, a YouTube channel with two hundred fifty thousand subscribers, thanks to you know you and him, I lost you know eighty pounds." And I was like, "That's wow. phenomenal." And it's it's so cool to have somebody just stop you out of nowhere when you're not you know thinking about it and say hey you're that guy. That wasn't even at a fitness convention. No, it was an anime convention. Well, because I do like anime style fitness stuff. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Uh, you know, like like I said, you know, when when I have people message me and they say hey I'm doing this or hey I'm doing this or I'm trying to break this world record or whatever, and it's like and it's because I started reading your stuff when I was 13 years old or when I was 16 years old and now I'm doing this and it's like thank you so much and it's, it, that, that kind of stuff is really really awesome because you get to see the impact that you have in the world because there's days that you do stuff and you go am I impacting anybody but myself right now? Am I doing anything? Yeah, I always so I always think about uh, you know Ryan Hall uh, I don't know if you know who that is uh, but he is he, he was uh, our the United States best marathon runner at, at one point. Now he's just getting heavy and lifting more of his weights. He's really bulking up. But uh, he, he always had a quote that really stuck with me, and it was, "You uh, figure out how you can use your money to help others." And it, I just think about that all the time. It's, it's not about me. You know, and, and that helps me. That helps motivate me. What is about you? You're some. Sometimes you're going like, "Well, I'm tired today," <laughs> or "I don't feel like doing it." Or it's cold outside. Yeah. So think about you know going out and passing one car, and that one car transforms into you know, the next inspiration to to other people. Who knows? Uh, and it was all worth it. 
Yeah, I mean, everything you do has some sort of effect on somebody else. And so if you try to have positive effect on people in general, you're going to have a positive effect. Hope so. Yeah, you'd hope so. Uh, yeah. So to, to kind of shift gears here a little bit, you were talking about you went to some coaches um, to try to get you know figured out and whatnot. And I know that right after you left, um, when, when we last saw each other, uh, you had been doing like uh, more CrossFit endurance style training. Um, and I don't, what's your training look like since you've been to several coaches? What kind of like, what things did they impart to you that you really like took to heart? Well, it's, it's specificity. So whatever you're training for is, is what you really go for. So right now, uh, my training is, it has, uh, that's CrossFit strength. Uh, lots what I'm mostly doing is rucking, uh, with, you know, uh, building up weight in my ruck, mm-hmm. um, up two and a half pounds every every uh, week and a half or so. We're so where are you at right now? Uh, I'm at 45. Okay. Uh, tomorrow, so today is my rest day. Uh, so <laughs> tomorrow it jumps up to fifth. Well, yeah, it would be 50. It's it's really yeah yeah the bladder weight, but that's dry. So 45 is dry. It's really like 50, but then. Gotcha. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It's, it's like the five pound increase. Uh, okay. But uh, now it's with a seventy five pound sandbag. I'm mostly doing all the work with that. So I'll I'll have wait time uh, for strength, and then you know the CrossFit endurance style stuff will be with uh, with the sandbag. So lots of sandbag work. Lots of mind numbing. Like, we've had a lot of rain, so I've been going out, and we have this nice little, like, 5K loop that we've, we've created, right, basically right in our backyard, and, uh, park across the street, and there's puddles, and it's just mandatory, like, when you see a puddle, you gotta get wet, um, whether it's a full submersion, whether it's throwing a sandbag in, getting your feet wet, you don't want to avoid puddles, it's just, you got to go for all the stuff that's out there. Yeah. Water, water cold, uh, and just embrace it. And just that loop, that continuous loop, and just that weight that's sitting on your ruck, and the ability to, and this sucks, but I've got to pick it up. This sucks, I've got to pick it up. Repeat, repeat, repeat. I'm hungry, I'm cold. You know, and that, that's the place to do it, and especially because it's so close to home. I'm not driving an hour to go in the woods, and I'm stuck there and committed. Yeah. I can walk two minutes across the street and be at home and have all this comfort. So, uh, that's, that's, a diff- that's a different kind of mental like stuff, too, because because you can quit, it's in your mind. You're like, oh, yeah. That option's there for you. Oh, yeah. You know, the best part of training is having the option to quit readily accessible to you and uh, having to feed it and carry on what you set up to do. That's phenomenal. Um, so what what does your uh, nutrition look like um, for this for like during your training for, for high endurance events and also during those events itself? Well, with the events coming up, you can't eat for 24 hours so on water. So uh, I've been I've been building that cycle up. Uh, you know, no pre workout, no no nutrition of any sort prior to that thing. Uh, I've gone up to eight hours so far. And that's been pretty good. Uh, and just and we're talking about doing work the whole time, doing yeah. work in the suck the whole time. Uh, now with the marathon. That's more like I did. I did uh, last week. That was more uh, regular nutrition, just the gels, the small tabs, uh, because that's that's a separate tier of uh, you know the record. Uh, so for selection training, no comforts, complete suck. For building, uh, the building phase gets a selection. Regular nutrition, regular uh, sorts of, of, of comforts. So uh, 
I, it's a roller coaster of training. What's your what are your what's your calorie count in a day look like? Do you know? I've never I've never honestly tracked it. Uh, I just go off moderation and you know what I'm kind of all great with numbers and it's all in my head really. So I know you you just look at like a hundred hours model. You put, that's usually the benchmark thing. Uh, so if I know I'm, I'm doing uh, a marathon with 600 power, then my consumption is, you know, it's going to be hot. Uh, but I used to do a day before, so whatever I'm, they call it like build the pump or uh, feeding the king pump. Okay. So I kind of fuel the tank the day before or mm -hmm. two days before, really. It's just like kind of, that's how I look at it. Well, make sure you have your, your muscle glycogen and your liver glycogen full up, you know, that you're ready to go with that kind of stuff. I find a, a dietitian or somebody specific to my nutrition really monitoring it. I'd probably perform better, but I just, I feel like after all these years, the moderation I've had I've done pretty well. Sure. Well, I mean, you, you've learned how your body seems to operate and how you seem to feel best about things, which is important. Right. Yeah, I mean, there's, I suppose there's certain things that like go with your body during different events, and I don't know. I mean, I've, I've been known to drink some honey bourbon during long events. <laughs> well, heck, why not? I... <laughs> um, so if you had to, uh, for the people who are watching, um, who, what would you say is your definition of success like just the first thing that pops in your mind when I say what do you um, what do you believe success is success is how I didn't be able to push through it um, can you say that yeah. one more time uh, is having the ability to establish a solid finish line and reaching it with with relatively ease and then breaking through to the next barrier and repeating that cycle. Uh, so that's an analogy that I, I use all the time when I'm training somebody uh, or just you know in daily life in, in the beginning of this conversation. Uh, write down what you're going to do the day before for the next day. When you wake up, you don't have to think about what you do. It's all set in stone when you're committed to it. So if it's a short-term finish line or a short-term goal, Break through it, knock it out, break through it. Uh, that's success. Success is every second, every minute that you you move forward, you drive and forward, and motivating and pursuing what you want to do in life. That's success. I think I think what you said is important because it doesn't limit success. Because people think, oh, if I get to this point, then I'll be successful. It's like. With success, the goalpost moves on its own. As soon as you get to that next spot, it's like success is further away. Yeah, it's like bump or leapfrog. There's always that next next jump. Right, yeah. Because why not, right? Yeah, I mean, why stop? And it doesn't have to be... We don't even have to go into fitness for it. You know, if everybody... There's so many topics to talk about, but, you know, the overall just be a good human on a daily basis uh, story of success, would I, I would love to drop it because in this day of age, nobody even communicates anymore. It's crazy. You give someone a compliment, they think you're a weirdo. Uh, you, if you have common courtesy, you don't get a response because nobody's deep in their their phones, you know, you hold the door for somebody and they're just looking at the phone and it's like, all right, well, thanks, thanks, guy. Uh, I just, I guess that's why I'm not big in social media because I'm very, I'm not even that old, I guess, but I'm, I'm old school. I, yeah. I like, I like human interaction. I like, I don't even like being on a phone to talk. I'd rather be in person and talk to you. Uh, oh, I, I completely understand. I'd much rather be in your living rooms having this conversation right now than over there. 
your face. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, that's the kind of person I am. I, I like that. So, uh, I think, I, yeah, we can we can talk about fit goals and finish lines. And that's what I look at success. But I also know, personally, like my journey with side, I know it is being a better person. And that's another special thing to become that person. You know, uh, we all we all have frustrations with people in our lives and relationships, daily occurrences. Uh, we all honk the horn once in a while, per se. But I feel like there, if we can succeed and better ourselves in that in that area, uh, maybe the world becomes a better place just that much more. Absolutely. You know, what you're talking about, I see a lot in high performers of anything. You see, like, you know, high-level martial artists or high-level athletes or high-level, um, you know, business people, and they always get to this point of excellence in their life, and that bleeds into their men, their, their morality. And they go, well, I want to be, I'm, I'm high-level here, I want to be, you know, I want to be excellent to other people and, you know, in general. Um, you know, Bruce Lee talked about um, uh, if you limit yourself, it will affect every area of your life, even your morality. And I feel like they're very closely tied in when you start going down, especially, especially fitness stuff, you start thinking about being a better person in general. I think that's just tied in somehow. I don't know how exactly, but I feel like it is. You know, we all, we all have, I, I, it probably becomes to the point where, you know, high level athletes get, get a lot of attention. Mm. And, uh, they just, they, I don't know if it's a guilt that, why is everybody looking at me? Why is everybody focused on me? Why me? Why me? And it becomes, you know, you turn into, well, let's be about them about them how do I how do I become better for them uh, and maybe that's how it kind of evolves you think you think it's all the spotlights being on you that you start to like look at yourself a little differently I mean I don't have a lot of spotlights but the, the very few dimmed uh, flashlights <laughs> in, in my direction uh, yeah I I do think that because people you know, high-level athletes have a lot of people that want to be like them, right? So that young Johnny, inspired athlete or uh, martial artist, uh, reaches out to Bruce Lee and says, how do I be like you? He has to turn his mindset and do, well, I do this, I do this, I do this. And he needs to transform to, well, how about we get you here so we can get you where I'm at, you know, in, in those little baby steps, and, and it becomes, it automatically becomes about them, and how to make them great, and, and better in life, really. Maybe, I don't... No, that's, I, look, I, we're all just kind of struggling in the dark here, trying to find, trying to find the truth, but I mean, I, I think, you know, if we keep working at it in general, we'll find it, <laughs> even if right. just a small portion of it. Train the trainer. That's what we call it in the military. Train the trainer. So. Hey, I've learned a, a lot of stuff. Of, you know, you know, you you think in your uh, arrogance as a as a younger person is like, oh, I know all the things, and it's like then you learn some stuff and you're like, I didn't know anything, and it's, <laughs> you know, and so it's oh. I I try to maintain that mindset all the time, you know be open to new ideas and understanding and, and that's the way that you're going to be able to make sure that you have a better understanding of the world around you. Right. Just, uh, <laughs> I just I just thought about one guy that always is in my head and I'm going blank in his name. Uh, uh, whoa, um, that's all right. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Samuel Jackson. <laughs> oh, okay. So you, I don't know. Basically, when when you said like you're you're a young kid, you don't know anything. 
his voice just jumped in my head, and he, like, I swear, it's like every movie, he's like, you don't know, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say that you've took, you've taken a newbie who's never done anything, and you've gotten them ready for their first event. Let's just say their first event, first event is a 10K. Okay? So, they've only been with you for a little while. They've gotten, they've, they've gotten ready for a 10K. You know, they were like super, super new when you got them. And it's like, this is, you are their only ever experience in fitness ever. So, and this is, the, for whatever reason, this is the last time that you're going to talk to them. What would you tell them? <laughs> I don't really say this, kind of like my, my quote, but it's so generic, but I would be like, crush it. And I high five and what? Because everything that I would have done with them for training is, is ready to go. I'm leaving them. Means that, all right, you're ready to go do it, and maybe I'm getting deployed, and I don't, I don't, we don't know the scenario, but I know that they're ready to go. I know that they're ready, or I, uh, that they're going to finish, that they're going to do it. Goals that we set out, goals that they're going to hit. So there's really nothing else to say except go crush it. And, you know, a lot of people will give more, oh, it's going to do great, you do great, I know you can got this. No, just go freaking crush it. That's it. No, that's good. I li- No, I like that. Because that. I mean, all of the, there's no reason to be, like, flowery with it. You've already put in all the work. At this point, it's just stop screwing around and do it. I, I don't, I don't think from the book, like, everything's already been, uh, we've, we've had staples. Their nutrition's been dialed in. Their training's been dialed in. Everything's ready to go. They have an event. You you just—it's like a mic drop. Go crush it. Do you my studio? If I see you. Fantastic. Yeah. Man, it has been absolutely fantastic being able to talk to you. Um, I will make sure to tag you on on Facebook and and share this whenever I get it edited here shortly. Um, and uh, thank you so much for for talking to everybody. Um, is there is there anybody like you have uh, a Twitter or anything or can, where can people find you? Uh, Woodpile Jones on Instagram. Okay, Woodpile Jones. Start there, yeah. Fantastic. I always, and that's the Woodpile that I used to live in in Vermont. It's nothing like crazy or weird. Cool. Well, I will put that. Uh, I'll put that in the description so people can see um, uh, where to get in contact with you. All right. All right, man. Cool. And I really appreciate it. Absolutely. And th- to everybody watching, thank you very much for checking out Mark Jones. He is a fantastic guy and a crazy athlete. And until next time, guys, good luck and train hard. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, below, we've got some training resources available for you if you want to go ahead and click that link. And once again, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, guys, good luck and train hard.